to me, a breast cancer, a, a tumor cell is like this room. You've got multiple lights, you've got multiple light switches, um, and you've got the wiring inside the wall. And you could see the switches on the wall, but you can't see the wiring, okay? But all of this in here is the wiring inside the wall. You can't see that when you look at a microscope, under a microscope, and see a tumor cell. But what this does is, this keeps the lights on, okay? And the lights for a tumor cell are survival, resistance, met metastases, invasion, dissemination. The, the key is to be able to turn the lights out, right? And you want to turn as many of the lights out as you can, because if you can turn all of the lights out, this room will be dark, and that's what we want for a tumor cell. If you could turn, you know, 12 out of the 13 off here, it's going to be pretty dark, and you probably won't see all that well. And so the more light switches and the more wires you can shut down, the better as far as a patient and for their position. Now on the surface of the cells are what we call receptors and receptor tyrosine kinases. Those are the light switches. That's what you can see, okay? These, the light switches in the cell, these receptors, are connected to the wiring, just like that light switch is connected to regulating that light. Um, and because this is complicated, and because most tumor cells are not dependent upon one light switch, because, think about it, tumors are the ultimate survival factors. I mean, if we could train ourselves to be like a tumor, we'd be living for 300 years. Um, so tumor cells are not stupid, and they're not going to rely on one light switch, because through evolution and through selection, they figured out that the tumor cells that only had one light switch died off pretty quickly, and that the tumor cells that had 40 light switches did a lot better in life. Um, so, so these are, this is a complicated mess out here, um, and therefore, for cancer therapy, you could either go after as many light switches as you can. And how do we go after light switches? Well, we've developed antibodies. So one is Herceptin. Okay, what does Herceptin do? It goes after that light switch, ERB2 or HER2. I apologize, some of these may say ERB2, HER2, it's one and the same. So essentially, Herceptin is like putting a baby cap on the light switch so a kid can't turn off and on. It doesn't do anything to the wiring. It just doesn't allow you to turn the switch on. But that wiring is still engaged. You haven't done anything to it. And so what happens eventually is if you just go after one light switch, then there's, a, there's other light switches. And so this light switch will start to regulate the lights, or this one will kick in and regulate the lights. And so now you've got to piece together in, a, in an individual's tumor, what are the light switches there? Because not every tumor has the same light switches. So you've got to develop a profile, a molecular profile, and say, you've got, I mean, I hate to make it sound like a Chinese menu, but you've got one from column A and three light switches from column B, and this is the sort of therapy that you're going to need based on our analysis of what your tumor is like. 